of good libations, our show about mixology, about adventures and trying new cocktails and new techniques and getting used to the cutting edge of whatever may be on the horizon today. And the last couple of episodes that we've done were about the use of shrub in cocktails, which I'm going to go on with, with this episode also. And this particular drink is going to be vodka based. And the nice thing about shrub is that you can use it in its ultimate different forms of all different types in pretty much any base liquor, depending on which direction that you want to go. And this particular shrub that we're going to use today is herbaceous. It has um, anisette was used in the preparation of it and also some herbs to produce kind of a unique flavor. And this particular shrub, unlike the other two, was actually cooked over heat because in this particular case, the anisette and the herb actually blends together better in the sugar and the white balsamic vinegar to produce the shrub. And shrubs, once again, have become very popular over the past 10 years. They were introduced into, you might say, American consciousness when it comes to cocktails about 15 years ago by very, very upscale bartenders and mixologists. And then about 10 years ago, they started to catch on in your more expensive establishments where they tend to have more innovation in their making of cocktails. And most shrubs tend to be based on fruit of some sort, especially berries. And I tried to steer away from that because that's the most popular form and used apple and pear for the other cocktails based on shrub. And those particular ones were made with a cold method where you macerate the fruit in the white balsamic and sugar to extract the flavor and to let it blend. And they take longer to make because they have to sit for about a day minimum. Whereas this particular one, which was cooked, is faster and easier to make about 45 minutes to an hour to be precise. And this one, once again, involves the use of anisette and also some herbs to produce a unique flavor. And of course, the nice thing about um, vodka is it's a neutral grain spirit. So pretty much anything can be blended with it. And unfortunately, too, that's kind of taken a sour note in cocktail culture because people got to the point where they got very bored with vodka drinks with the proliferation of all different types of frou-frou martinis. And vodka kind of has gotten a bit mediocre and a bit overused, but the use of shrub has kind of resurrected it a bit and made it a bit more interesting for people to try out. So we're gonna proceed and make this cocktail. And I call this cocktail the herbicide. And to begin with, I'm gonna put some ice in here And again, we don't need a magnificent amount of ice, just a little bit. Because we don't want to interfere with the, in, you know, the combination of the vinegar and the fruit, or in this case, herbaceous substances like anisette and herbs. And I'm gonna go ahead and pour the vodka in at this particular point here. And now I'm gonna go ahead and pour the shrub in. And you will notice with these um, shrub infused, you might say cocktails, that I pretty much pour the whole thing in. So the balance of shrub versus alcohol is a bit greater. And you also can add alcohol if you're making shrub yourself. And some of the commercial ones that you can pick up have alcohol in them. So that way you're, you're gonna get plenty of alcohol in your drink if that's what you want. But what we don't want is an overwhelming flavor of alcohol that eclipses the goodness of the drink because that's not truly a good cocktail. The flavor should be there, but they should be subtle. And the alcohol finish, very much so, should be subtle. So there we have it. We have a good balance of the herbaceous 
um, shrub plus the vodka. So I'm going to go ahead and shake it up and see how this one turns out. Hopefully it'll be very good as the other ones were. And I'm going to go ahead and dispense it in our martini glass, which again is an, a nice way to show off um, drinks based on shrub. And with this particular drink, instead of putting the lime in the shaker, what we do is we add the lime at the very last. And we squeeze a good quarter of lime into it. Because this particular shrub being made of an herbaceous substance instead of a fruit can actually use a bit more acidity, so it's appropriate to use a fairly good amount of lime. And also to exhibit the beauty of it, we can cut off a little bit of lime here as a garnish, squeeze the tiny portion of it and drop it in the drink. And that way it makes the drink look pretty. And because this is herbaceous, it has a little bit of a green, slight green tinge to it. And of course the ultimate, uh, you might say, acid test is the flavor and the taste. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a taste now and see if this is as good as it claims to be. Oh, I do have to say indeed that is a very nice cocktail. Unique, definitely different, and definitely something that would impress even the most jaded enjoyer of alcoholic beverages. And again, this is simply based on vodka and an herbaceous shrub, which is made with a cooking type method, a heat type method, rather than the cold maceration method. Because in this particular case, it brings out the best of the anisette and the herbs. Yeah, I do have to have another taste of this. This is really very good. And the advantage, as I explained before about shrub, is that it tends to stay clear instead of opaque. Because when you start adding fruit juices and certain other things to other cocktails, they tend to become opaque. But shrub-based drinks tend to stay clear, which is kind of a nice touch too, and it makes them unique. Because people don't quite know what they're tasting when they see a clear drink like that. They wonder what's in it. Because as was the case with the apple and the pear shrub, it's pretty much clear. It doesn't even have a yellowish cast to it. So people don't know quite what they're getting with their whiskey and their rum. And with this particular one, they might have a bit of a clue, but it's the same principle. So whether we make shrub ourselves, or order it from the internet or from an upscale liquor merchant, let's make use of it because it is something that is relatively new and is still on the cutting edge. And a lot of establishments haven't even caught on using it at all. So if we use it in our home when we entertain people at cocktail parties, we will make a definite impression because it is something different. And people will take note of that and be very surprised in a delightful sort of a way. And we want to thank you for tuning in to our program, Good Libations. I'm Ethel Andrews, I'm a mixologist hyphen bartender. And as I mentioned before, it's good to add that because mixologist is becoming a little bit too shishi. So we want to remember that none of these drinks are out of reach of even the average person as long as we use the fresh ingredients and try new things and become adventurous, we can get out of a rut and we can really impress others. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Good Libations. I'm Ethel Andrews, a mixologist, and we will look forward to future shows.